Hi everyone, this is Jan Wilczek from TheWolfSound.com and today we're going to talk about a very important topic which is aliasing. Aliasing is a really common phenomenon in the digital signal processing area. Therefore, it's really important to understand it well. Let's first do a quick recap of the sampling theorem. The sampling theorem says that we should take over twice as many samples per second as the highest frequency in the signal we observe. Let's look how the sample rate and the maximum frequency relation looks in these three cases. In the first one, we have sampling rate greater than two times the maximum frequency in the observed signal. So we take over two samples per each period of the observed signal. As we can see from these samples, we can quite well see the overall shape of the signal we sample. And thanks to the sampling theorem, we can reconstruct this shape perfectly. In the case when the sampling rate is exactly equal to two times the maximum frequency, we have to be lucky in order to receive proper samples. And in this case, we are. Because from these samples, we somehow get the general idea of how the original signal could look like. In the third case, the sampling rate is lower than two times the maximum frequency in the signal, which means that we're taking less than one sample per period of the observed signal. Clearly, these three samples do not resemble the original shape of the signal. Now to look uh, how this aliasing effect looks on the frequency spectrum, we need to firstly talk a little bit about the difference between continuous and discrete spectra. What is a spectrum? An amplitude frequency spectrum is a function of amplitude over frequency. So these are amplitudes of particular frequency components in the signal S. If we knew a complete analog signal, so continuous function, and we computed its Fourier transform, we'd receive a continuous spectrum. And it could look somewhat similar to this one. As we can see, the support of this function is finite. So beyond certain maximum frequency and plus and minus sign, there are no frequency components. Their amplitude is equal to zero. The negative frequencies are, uh, have the same amplitude as the positive frequencies because the observed signal is real valued. So the amplitude f at minus f max is exactly equal to amplitude at plus f max. When we go to the digital domain, we get, after computing the discrete Fourier transform, a replicated spectrum every sample rate. So we have our original, let's say, spectrum over here, but the same spectrum is duplicated with the center at fs and at the center of minus fs, and at 2fs, 3fs, and so on. So why does this happen? Well, we can intuitively understand it in the following way. Let's assume that we sampled some signal and we just got the samples. We know nothing about the signal whatsoever. And we got these two points at equal height right here. So we want to reconstruct the signal. And I may very well say that, okay, presumably it's a constant function. So I can draw it like this. And I, I'm saying that this one has frequency equal to zero, which corresponds to this point right here. Okay, well, I may also say that 
Uh, it's a sampled sinusoid, but its period is the inverse of the sampling rate. As you can see, if the original signal looked this way, we would receive exactly the same two samples right here. And the same goes for 2FS. Maybe this one. Okay, so the blue one, the blue signal corresponds to this frequency. The green signal may correspond to this frequency and so on and so forth. So that's the way we can intuitively view the multiplicity of discrete Fourier spectra. Okay, so let's look how aliasing affects our digital spectra. Let's assume we had the signal that we sampled at sample rate fs, uh, but its maximum frequency was beyond the Nyquist frequency. So what happens now? This is the spectrum of our original signal, but as you remember, it gets duplicated. So we receive exactly similarly shaped spectra. And what happens over here is that the frequency components overlap. And since we assumed that the original signal had frequencies not higher than the Nyquist frequency, after reconstruction, around this area, we'll get a frequency component that primarily wasn't there, or it will have a change twisted amplitude. Let's look at a simple example. Here, we have a sampling rate of 48 kilohertz, and we have a signal that is 38 kilohertz, so it's well beyond the audible frequency range, which does not exceed 20 kilohertz. Okay, so we sampled signal at 48 kilohertz, and uh, the pr presumably sign at 38 kilohertz got duplicated, right? So if here's the middle, and here's like the left side of the spectrum. After duplication, we'll get a component here. At exactly 38 minus 48 kilohertz. But since our signal is real valued, the negative frequency will be reflected back to the positive frequency. And what will happen is that after reconstruction, we'll get a 10 kHz frequency, which is in the audible range. So although we sampled an inaudible signal, after reconstruction, we got an audible signal. And that's the power and misfortune of aliasing. Now that we've learned what aliasing is, let's look at some code and put it into practice. Okay, so we're in the Jupyter notebook. And we're going to run a simple example of how aliasing can affect our sampled signal. Okay, so first we do some Jupyter commands, then we import NumPy, matplotlib.pyplot, and in this example I'm using sound device for playing out audio. I define some plotting parameters, and then there's the signal functions which for given amplitude a, frequency f, and time t with a phase offset phi returns a sign at that frequency with these parameters. 
Then I used uh, something what is called a normalized DFT. It calculates the discrete Fourier transform of the signal via fast Fourier transform. And then I'm normalizing the discrete spectrum over using the maximum amplitude of the frequency components. You can see here the, the absolute value means that it's an amplitude frequency spectrum. And here I find the biggest amplitude of a frequency component and divide each amplitude f through this amplitude. Okay, and then I'm getting only the points for which DFT is non-zero. Okay, here I defined some of the parameters I'm going to use. It's 48 kilohertz sampling rate. And duration of the signal is one second. And here I have a 10 millisecond frame that I will compute discrete Fourier transform from. And I'm going to rescale the plot uh, not to show values in hertz, but rather in kilohertz, so it'll be more feasible. Okay, here is the procedure that I'm going to run for every frequency that I'm testing. So I first I'm given a frequency f. I'm generating a signal uh, with amplitude one over the time, which is one second, and then I'm calculate the discrete Fourier transform of the signal. I'm scaling the frequencies uh, to have them in kilohertz scale. Then I play out the signal using some device play. And then I plot its discrete spectrum, amplitude spectrum. And we're going to look how it sees right now. First, we're going to look at uh, 100 hertz. So I'm going to generate a signal, one second signal at the frequency of 100 hertz. And then I'm going to display its spectrum. Okay, you could hear that it's quite a low frequency. And here the scale is from minus 15 to plus 15 kilohertz. So uh, you can see two peaks here, but they are so near that they almost seem like a one. Okay, let's look what would be like a thousand hertz. So we generated, then we played it out, and then we uh, show its discrete frequency spectrum. Okay, it was a little bit higher, but we can still hear that it's uh, kind of like 1000 hertz. And we can see two nice peaks over here, which correspond to one kilohertz and minus one kilohertz. Okay, now let's try out 10,000 hertz. Okay, and we see that we have our two peaks over here. So let me remind now that the sampling rate is 48 kilohertz. So the Nyquist frequency is 24 kilohertz, which means that if we sample a signal that is over 24 kilohertz, then we're going to be prone to aliasing. And that's precisely what I want to do right here. I want to generate a signal at 38,000 hertz and then sample it and then calculate its discrete frequency spectrum to see what frequency component it has. Okay, what happened here? We have again 10 kilohertz. What does it mean? Well, 48 kilohertz minus 38 kilohertz results in 10 kilohertz. As we explained earlier, this is the, these are the aliasing components that appeared in our sampled signal, although they weren't there before. We can hear that uh, playing out 38 kilohertz is equivalent to playing out 10 kilohertz, uh, although these are completely different, different frequencies and 38 kilohertz is in the inaudible range. So it all comes down to too low sampling rate for these conditions. Once again, 10 kilohertz 
and 38 kilohertz. It sounds the same. That's the power of aliasing. Okay, so finally, let's talk about how to avoid aliasing. Since aliasing results from the maximum frequency of the signal exceeding the Nyquist frequency, we can either increase the Nyquist frequency, which means increasing the sample rate, or we can ensure that the sample signal, the sample signal is inside the Nyquist frequency range. And that can be done through low-pass filtering, but mind you that uh, if we do not want to sample the signal earlier, it has to be done through an analog filter. There are many techniques related to eliminating aliasing, but the fundamental idea has been presented in that video. That's all from me for today. I hope you enjoyed. And if you did, please subscribe, hit the thumbs up and leave a comment. What would you like to learn or maybe what's your experience with aliasing? Take care.